Okay, so on to my second speech, which is about the Cyrillic alphabet. Um, you'll probably have seen the Cyrillic alphabet somewhere, I assume. Uh, there's one piece of vocabulary that I have to give you, which is Azbuka, A-Z-B-U-K-A, A-Z-B-U-K-A. Okay, I won't tell you what it is. I don't want to ruin the surprise. Um, but you will hear it at some point during the speech. Okay, <clears throat> so, everyone ready? Good, let's go. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Like many of you here, I have had the opportunity to travel extensively in Europe. I've even been able to live and work in other EU member states and learn the local language, learn about the culture. But I've got to a stage now where I find that traveling in other EU member states doesn't provide me with the type of culture shock that I want. I want to discover something new to find out about different cultures. So uh, last summer I uh, was fortunate enough to be able to travel to other parts of the world and I'm going to tell you about one of those trips. Uh, one of the trips I went on was around the Balkans, so beside the European Union but not in the European Union. And to be honest, there are so many interesting things to be said about this region that I could probably write ten speeches. But I'll start with this one, and I'll focus on one particular area. One of the things that struck me when I arrived in Belgrade, the capital of Serbia, was that the signs were all in a different alphabet, in the Cyrillic alphabet. And coming from Western Europe, where you're used to being able to read things, more or less, even if you don't understand the language, it was a bit disorientating at the beginning. So this evening I'd like to talk to you about this alphabet, where it came from, where it's used, so on and so forth. And I'm going to start by talking about the name. So it's uh, called the Cyrillic alphabet. That's maybe a little bit of a mysterious name. It's not like the Latin alphabet or the Roman alphabet or the Greek alphabet. It's not connected to one particular country or region. So where does it come from? Well, as the name suggests, it was named after Saint Cyril. And uh, Saint Cyril didn't discover the language himself, but some of his followers did. And in tribute to Saint Cyril, uh, the followers decided to name the alphabet after him. However, uh, many speakers of, sorry, many uh, users of the Cyrillic alphabet uh, refer to it as Azbuka. And you might wonder where this unusual name comes from. And I didn't know where it came from until this afternoon when I was preparing the speech. Uh, but it's actually the first two letters of the old Cyrillic alphabet. So not the modern Cyrillic alphabet, but the old one. So Azbuka. And it's actually quite similar to alphabet, which obviously comes from the Greek letters alpha, beta, alphabet. So uh, you've learned something new, I hope. And uh, where, where did it come from and where is it spoken, or where is it used, rather? Well, many people refer to the Cyrillic alphabet as the Russian alphabet. And as you'll discover later in the speech, uh, it is mainly used in Russia. However, the Cyrillic alphabet actually came from modern-day Bulgaria, and it is still used there today. Actually, when Bulgaria joined the European Union on the 1st of January 20, 2007, Cyrillic became the third official script of the European Union after the Latin alphabet and the Greek alphabet. And many Bulgarians, as you can imagine, are not very happy when it's referred to as the Russian alphabet because they see themselves as the uh, founders of, of the alphabet. But uh, Cyrillic is used in a wide range of other countries. In fact, as of 2011, it was used by 252 million people around Eurasia. And uh, so it's used in a variety of different languages, uh, most notably Russian. In fact, half of the 252 million users uh, are Russian speakers. However, it's also used in a variety of other countries, just to name a few, Belarus, Serbia, where I was, Macedonia, and uh, Ukraine. So here we're talking about an alphabet, about a script, and you might just think, oh, these are just a collection of letters. But actually, there is something of a, a political 
uh, message behind the use of Cyrillic. You'll notice that many of the countries where the Cyrillic script is used are, um, are countries which support Russia or which receive aid of one type or another from Russia. So it's perceived that the use of the Cyrillic script actually moves you closer to Russia, in a sense. And conversely, some countries have decided to transition to the Latin script, away from the Cyrillic script, to distance themselves from Russia and the Russian sphere of influence. Uh, this is especially true for uh, Moldova, which transitioned to the Latin script when the USSR um, disintegrated in 1989. And there are some other countries which are transitioning from the Cyrillic, Cyrillic script to the Latin script, and they include uh, Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan, and Kazakhstan. In Russia, the Cyrillic script is very widely used. It's actually, the government has stated that it must be used in all public communications. So that's for, for example, official government use, but also uh, between Russians. And uh, this is somewhat controversial in some parts of, uh, of Russia, especially in uh, parts of Russia where there's a separatist movement, uh, most notably in Chechnya. And in Chechnya, they've decided to continue using the Latin script uh, to defy uh, Russia. And people in the diaspora, in particular the Chechen diaspora, use the Latin script because they associate the Cyrillic script with Russian imperialism. So as you can see, we're not just merely talking about a collection of 33 letters. We're talking about something which is much more political in nature. So it's something that can disorientate a simple traveler, a simple tourist like me. But the Cyrillic script is also a tool which can be used to exert political influence over a region. Thank you very much for your attention.